can start. Hannah Lundberg, welcome to Graduation Chapel. This is Erin Miner. Welcome. Welcome. You have arrived. Congratulations, graduates. Look forward to seeing what you're going to do in the world. Hello. My name's Naomi Jewell. Welcome. Anna Spencer. Welcome. Hi, this is Mary. Welcome. Welcome. I'm Melissa. My name is Myra. Welcome. Hola, hermanos y hermanas. Congratulations, blessings, and happiness to all. Bendiciones. Adios. Welcome. I'm Hannah, welcome. Allison, welcome. Hi, I'm Naomi, welcome. Hi, this is Brett, welcome. Hi, I'm Monique Fortune, welcome. Hi, this is Stacy Mitchell and my puppy Ruthie, and we're here to say welcome. Welcome to Graduation Chapel. Greetings to one and all. Thank you so much for joining us as we celebrate the commencement of our next chapters. And to my siblings from the class of 2021, I wish you love, peace, and joy. From Anne and Thea, welcome. Hello, this is Dan Kimberg, welcome. Hi, I'm Priska, welcome. Orange Blossom Miller here, welcome. Hello everyone, welcome from Only. Nan Walsh, welcome. Bonjour et bienvenue. Bridget Webster, welcome. Hey, it's Becca, welcome. Hi, I'm Vanessa Warwick Lindley, welcome. a libation for the class of 2021. A libation for faith, hope, love, and justice. We stand on this Lenape land to know that from dust we came to dust we shall return. Elders and ancestors have poured into us. Now let us go out into the world and pour love, hope, faith, justice into our callings and into the world. Never forgetting that we are pouring in love, hope, and faith. And we are pouring out love, hope, and faith. Let it be so. A blessing, an offering, of compassion, love, hope, and faith for the class of 2021. Let it be so, let love win. Let love win, let compassion flow, let justice run like a mighty stream. 
now and forever. Shalom, amen, amen, namaste. Let it be so. Pouring in, pouring out. Now, I invite you to breathe together, to be here, to be now, to be present all together. You may close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Breathing in. Breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. I am blooming like a flower. I am fresh as a dew. I am solid as a mountain. I am form as the earth. I am free. I am free. I am free. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. I am blooming like a flower. I am fresh as a dew. I am solid as a mountain. I am form as the earth. I am free. I am free, I am free. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the space. My name is Nordia Bennett, and I am going to share some words with you all. And I think it's important for me to let you know my positionality um, in this. And I come from a Pentecostal background and we love our God and we love our Jesus. And so we want to name that on this morning. And David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But on today, we are not in the space to be together, but within these Zoom boxes, we are together and we are love. And I just want to name that one today. And the text that will be grounding me today is coming from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 17 to 18. And the words are, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. And those are the words. The day finally arrived when I would attend my first class at Union Theological Seminary with so much 
fear of the unknown. I grasped with every fiber of my being, hoping not to be completely transformed by this experience. But as we know, it's hard not to be transformed when you are led by the spirit of God. For I and many of my peers that will be graduating today, we, co we were constantly asked to contemplate and mold over the question, why seminary? No, really, like of all places, you want to go to seminary? Why, what is your call? What is your vocation? And a key reality of my being and experiences of my peers is this understanding of our call and our purpose. And, and what is it? And how do we understand it and, and listen to it and activate it and mold it and, and embody it? And like many call narratives, it is this undying, painful, yet insightful reality that we were named by the divine creator to embark on this journey of living into our human experience. We are commissioned and charged and divinely appointed by God and God's self to do the work in our, in our human injustice experiences, to seek the truth and, and proclaim the good news amid horror and, and terror. And, and this morning's text, Acts 2, 17, 2, 17 to 18, we are met with our good friend, Peter. Oh, Peter, who speaks these words on this morning to us, who must explain the mystery and wonders of the spirit, which cannot be named, cannot be touched, but can only be embraced. It is unf unf unfamiliar to those sitting in the locked room waiting, but waiting for what? I believe, you know, <laughs> they were waiting to witness the justice of God reign on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. And God said, I will pour out my spirit amongst all people. And during this great moment, they believed they were drunk off that good stuff. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I would want to do. But the surprising words of Peter commemorates what is known to be the beginning of the Holy Spirit being poured out onto God's people. I like that, poured out. And just like that moment locked in a room, we too were locked in our homes for over a year, distant from loved ones, chosen family, lovers and friends, just waiting, waiting for the announcement that we will finally return to our lives. But as we've spent the time waiting, just as our friends and acts waiting, something did happen, or shall I say, something has been happening and continues to happen, whether we are aware of it or not. The spirit, in fact, did move amongst those in the room waiting and watching. And as they waited and watched, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit spirits and they began to speak in other languages and the spirit gave them this ability but beloved I wrestle with great celebration and despair because the spirit of God which invokes abundance around us above us below us requires us to embrace act and even more importantly listen to the spirit but I have a question for y'all today what happens when we don't listen to the dreams and visions of those we are in community with? These dreams and visions being expressed and highlighted are speaking truth to power and against power unapologetically. When we don't take the time to listen to the power of God move, we are gaslit and manipulated to believe we did not hear and see the spirit of truth proclaiming outside the four walls of the church in our ivory towers. And I mean, even in the classroom. Beloves, I have some dreams and visions that I wanna share with you this morning, if you are right with that. I have a vision of a world where we can we can be, we can go to the doctors and be treated and not care if we have a copay because we can't afford the doctors. 
I have a vision where each and every one of us has the capacity to choose careers that fulfill our souls in pursuing jobs just to supply the necessities of life. Like, come on, really affordable housing? Let's just say you don't wanna give us housing, but we deserve that housing. I have a vision that leads us to a world that sees everyone for who they are and they love who they are and they don't have to be afraid because they're gonna get kicked out of the church or cast out of their household because they love who they love. And I have a dream where we allow children to be children instead of locking them into cages, stripping them of their livelihood before they even got a chance to experience the joys of life. Then lastly, I have a dream where black women are sleeping in their beds peacefully at night, dreaming dreams where their daughters and sons can be dreamt into this world. I mean, my dreams are radical. I don't know about y'all, but I got some radical dreams. And the Lord said, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. And beloved, we know the spirit is chaos, but I will say that there is beauty in the mess because it is the complexities and the nuances of the spirit where God is released and freed from the chains of expectations and norms, where dreams and visions can blossom and take on its own meaning. You know, it's funny because we, we think this scene is some is grand and, 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 it's, and it's unique, but in reality, it is those spaces where the spirit moves, where we experience them every single day and small pockets of liberation where we, where we see the spirit and the spirit does in fact show up. But don't play yourself because you have seen the spirit moves. Don't let them lie to you. You've seen the spirit and the spirit that pours out takes up space boldly and proudly and the spirit that pours out screams and cannot be missed the spirit that pours out demands liberation and creativity to take it to its neck their next height the spirit that pours expounds the love and tenderness that is that is encoded in the lives of all human beings the holy spirit has commissioned all of us not the not us with phds not us with masters and divinities, not us that went to school and we paid for the, we got loans, y'all. Don't let them lie to you. We are, we are all commissioned every single day of our human existence to dream and radically imagine and wrestle, not just for individual and social uplifting and like, okay, I mean, like respectability, but we are commissioned by God, the spirit to radically fight into our dreams and live into our dreams on purpose, not trying to, but on purpose, because my liberation is tied to yours. The liberation of the people is marked by visions that say, I see you and I, and I love you and I'm here for you. And you know, dreams and visions are scary. I mean, I ended up in seminary y'all. So how that was the plan, you know? But when, when we're not dreaming, we are and listening into state station violence masked in false promises of hope, which refuses to acknowledge our personhood. The essence of God is truth telling y'all. With truth telling, we are required to operate outside the parameters that were given to us. We are tasked with radically imagining a world in which we are not only confronting justice, but we are justice. We are justice because we wake up every single day to live into the fullness of our being and not trying to, but you are doing it. And the truth of the matter is we are truth. However, like big concept that is, we are truth and it's embodied in fleshly form. So God did say, I will pour out my spirit on all people. So this morning, I will leave this with you this morning. The spirit of truth is countercultural and, it, and it's an invitation to say yes to creating something new within our communities, within our friendships, within our romantic relationships, and most importantly, within ourselves. Because what happens when we don't listen to the dreams and visions of those we are in community with? We fail to misinterpret 
and and be able to witness the justice of God working through and within us, even if you are just walking down the street, enjoying life. God is still there. And you, beloved, are allowed to take up space. And with that, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. What I would like to offer to on this day is a teaching by Union alum Thich Nhat Hanh, such that without the mud, there can be no lotus. Now, I remember one of the first emails I got from Union suggesting that there was a book that I should read to helped me through my, my uh, seminary experience about surviving and thriving because not only is seminary graduate school, and I've already done graduate school once, so I, I had an idea of, of some of the challenges I was going to face, but it's more. It's emotional stress. It is a spiritual undertaking in the way that no other schooling, educational experience is. And so, not gonna lie, I didn't read it. I totally walked into Union, just flying by the seat of my pants. <laughs> and seminary has been quite the struggle we have endured some mud, and now is our time to blossom. That's what I would normally say if this were a normal chapel service without COVID and without a whole bunch of other things that have happened throughout this year. This is more than just normal mud. We have endured something different than any of the other generations have before us when going through seminary. We have attempted to switch our educational experience from in-person to a Zoom offering because of a global pandemic and trying to foster spiritual community in a way that we weren't ready for. Some of us who didn't really have a good place to go, stayed at Union, and we had to endure an antithetical tower being built and construction noises at three in the morning. 
I almost overslept because the sound of silence. <sighs> it's the small joys. And that's, that's what our class was when I entered. Justice and joy. I am overjoyed to have made it this far because as I said, it's been a struggle and I really didn't think I was going to make it even about a week or so ago, but we're here. And now comes time for the justice. We are setting out into a world, as I said, different from those before us. We have embraced the suck and now we are going to help liberate our peers, our communities right now. There is bombing in Gaza, in, in the Holy Land for some of us. For me and my community, the Native Americans, we have water insecurity, resource insecurity that has been going on longer than I've been alive, actually probably double in some places, and governments refuse to do what is right. So that's what we're here for we're stepping up and doing what is right. Being the warriors, the peacemakers, being the things that we have been charged for. As I said, normally graduation, we get all sorts of advice like the Boz Lerman song, everybody's free to wear sunscreen, in which case it was a spoken word column set to music about all the advice that those commissioned graduates of the class of 1999 were given. But that doesn't entirely apply right now because this world is different. And the challenges that we face are so much more dire. So I wish that I had something profound to share with you other than we have really rooted in that mud and we are about to blossom in all of our glory. But you know, I, I, th I think we can hold on to the sunscreen. We should probably try that out. Blessings be and amen. Thank you, Jake, for your reflection. Now, my reflection is a movement reflection. I've been a dancer my entire life, so I felt inspired to offer that. Um, so. Here it is.
when duty calls, how many of you entered seminary based on some form of call? Whether there was an internal knowing, a dream, a vision, a voice, or other form of divine clairvoyance. Place a one in the chat if a call led you to union. Mine came as a result of an encounter with a Mayan shaman in Mexico during my honeymoon in August of 2017. The morning after meeting the shaman, I woke with a clarity, a clarity of purpose. I wrote in my journal that I would attend Union Theological Seminary and get a graduate degree and one day get my doctorate focusing on religious inclusion. Now y'all, none of that was on my radar in my consciousness before that day. I, like many of you have received a call. And I, like you, answered the call. The call to dedicate my life to my sacred duty. Take a moment, go back, remember your call to seminary, your call to union. The path was made clear and you showed up. Along the way, maybe some trees fell and you felt found a way over them and around them. At times there may have seemed to be an internal night, but the morning came with its beautiful sun rays. Glory be to God for the beautiful rays of sun that came in the form of family, friends, fur babies, meditative moments. You tenaciously navigated the mountains and the canyons. You moved in faith. And here you are today graduating during a global pandemic and international turmoil. Woo! In the name of sacred duty. Now I say that confidently today, but I have spent a lot of time pondering the theological and practical meaning of duty. One of the things that I have learned about my personality is that I generally don't like being told what to do. It's true. <laughs> now, based on the common use of the term duty, it seemed imposing, restricting, all things I don't like. So what is duty? Is it an obligation? A purpose like what Jake talked about? what Nordia talked about, a burden, a joy. The Bhagavad Gita teaches us to release the fruits of our actions performed in service to God through faith. And Barbara Stolen Miller's translation, which I filter through a womanist lens, Lord Krishna explains sacred duty to the reluctant warrior Arjuna by saying in the second, second teaching, to 31 to 32. Look to your own duty. Do not tremble before it. Nothing is better for a warrior than the battle of sacred duty. The doors of heaven open for warriors who rejoice to have a battle like this thrust on them by chance. And later in the third teaching 335, Krishna says, your own duty done imperfectly is better than another person's done well. These teachings are about embracing faith and duty over fear, about following your divinely guided path, not someone else's path, despite the fears and the doubts. Class of 2021, we did that. And there were many times <laughs> during these last three years when it felt like I was in a battle to maintain that seminary path. Combating, competing, Moodle deadlines. Oh, the Moodle deadlines. Family obligations, pastoral responsibilities, social injustices, health concerns, financial worries, and self-care. I mean, really? Self-care? 
as a true warrior does, I brought my best to each familiar and new battle. And I am not alone. Type in the chat, sacred warrior, if I'm telling the truth. Why? Why do we persist in these battles? Why did we persevere through the many struggles we encountered during seminary? Why didn't we walk away? Quit. It was the call, the sacred duty, the call to sacred duty. Fazlur Rahman is a key figure in modern Quranic interpretation. He provides an account of Islamic theological anthropology in his work, Man as Individual. He talks about the ongoing forces in life that seek to deter us from the straight path that is the fulfillment of God's mission for us. Again, filtered through a womanist lens, he says that it is this deep-seated moral fact that constitutes the eternal challenge for humans and renders their life an unceasing moral struggle. In this struggle, God is with you, provided you make the necessary effort. Humans are squarely charged with this effort because they are unique in the order of creation. Having been endowed with free choice in order to fulfill their mission as guides, vice Durant. It is this mission, the attempt to create a moral social order on earth, which the Quran in Surah 33, Ayah 72 describes as the trust. The trust. To fulfill our sacred duty to God as vice durants, creating a moral social order on earth. I submit to you today that this is in fact our duty as the class of 2021 and the 183rd graduating class of Union Theological Seminary, we were each called. We are being sent into the world as divine channels, warriors of faith and dutiful servant leaders to enter into our, our each unique spheres of influences with a mandate to create social order in the form of justice, equity, and inclusion for all of creation. Never forget this. As we have been entrusted with this divine mission, it is our absolute duty to celebrate in gratitude. I am grateful for each of you, for you chose to hear the call. You didn't send it to voicemail. You didn't ignore the ring as an unknown caller. Well, maybe you did the first time, but eventually you put aside the fear and doubt and answered this most important call. Because as we learned in the parable of the wedding in Matthew 22, not everyone answers the call. Not everyone accepts the divine invitation. For many are called, but few are chosen. Because you choose sacred duty, I know the world is better and your contributions will continue to shift this planet. So today let's rejoice in our success from our multiple locations around the world, knowing we are presently lifting the planetary vibration. Knowing that tomorrow, inshallah, the work continues. Look to your own duty. Do not tremble before it. Nothing is better for a warrior than a battle of sacred, sacred duty. I send each of you blessings of oneness, joy, and love. Namaste, Ashe, and so it is. Thank you so much. That was beautiful.
So our next portion is going to be a little ritual that would be better in person, but we're making the most of it online. And so some of you might remember having blessings rain down on you in the chapel. It's a ritual that we often do for the first chapel for incoming classes and the last chapel for graduates. And while I cannot make blessing confetti fall into your living rooms where you are now, we're going to share in a video of this in the chapel. And I want to say a word just so you know what you're seeing. So graduates and community members were asked in the last few weeks to send in blessings particular for this class. And graduates were also asked to respond to a few more questions. And so those responses are going to appear on some different colors of paper. So 111 people were named by members of the graduating class as those who made a positive impact on their experience at Union. Those names are printed on yellow paper in this ritual and they don't begin to account for the many, many more teachers and family members and ancestors and leaders and loved ones who have shaped and formed members of this class. And we also asked graduates to submit things that brought them joy in their time at Union and those are printed on green paper in this ritual. They included things like singing in chapel and laughing and praying together in a dorm room solidarity and mutual support in times of struggle, and so much more. And the unifying theme was joy in moments of community and joy in the people that folks met here at Union. We also asked about disappointments, the things that have felt not right in this strange seminary journey. Those are printed on red paper and they included things like the tower construction, the loneliness of Zoom school and Zoom rituals, the violence we witnessed on campus this semester, and the disappointment of ingrained systems that feel hard to change. And finally, we asked for blessings. Those are both from the graduating class and from members of the community broadly. We had 42 blessings submitted in total. So they don't all appear in this video. They're all dropping from the ceiling, but you won't hear or see all of them. But graduates are gonna get a hard copy of the blessings in the mail and everyone can access them online at a link that we'll put in the chat. So enjoy, here is a sharing of our blessings. May the class of 2021 be blessed by the words of their community. May we spread justice, laughter, and love wherever we go. May you be strengthened to reach out to the forgotten and the overlooked. Blessings. Praying we all go out and continue our call to justice and joy. I bless you with spiritual fortitude, unending energy to seek goodness and justice, and the brilliance of love abundant. May you always know your immense value, not because you have done anything special or accomplished anything impressive, but simply because you are you. May you be blessed with strength, courage, and determination to fight for social justice around the world. May your ministry of life radiate peace, beauty, and justice. May peace and goodness go before you, behind you, and beside you. May you always find ways to be authentically who God created in all your ministerial pursuits. May you have the courage and strength to do what is yours. Sending a blessing of knowing the truth of oneness, love, and joy today and all days. May you go forth to leave your beautiful mark on the world. Go in peace and dance with our Lord of justice. May you always remember your connectivity to the whole of creation. May the good things that the Creator has in store for you continue to be revealed. May you hear God's voice in this changed world. And may it guide to your calling in this long arc towards justice. May your service reflect God's grace and mercy to humankind. May we continue to grow and learn from one another as our individual and collective passions advocate for a better world. May you always find refuge and fortitude in God. Rest, pleasure, joy, and a break from union. May you leave knowing that this degree did not qualify you for what's to come. You are already qualified to do the work the world needs from you. Love one another. May your immense learning bear fruit. May your heart continue to expand into love. May you always keep the confidence that you are seen, held, 
and prayed for. May your own theology, developed in learning and in relationships at Union, now go forth with you into the world, empowering you to support the vulnerable, convince the powerful, and speak truth in love. May we hold each other close and turn to the wisdom of the Spirit as we discern what comes next for us. Shine on boldly. Holding the class of 2021 in the light, affirming that you are exactly where you need to be as you continue on your journey after graduation. Rest in blessing. We're so glad you are here. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you Mary, I could share from the downloaded version if you'd like. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. And your people are my people. Your people are mine. And your people are my people. You're divine, my divine. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. And your people are my people. Your people are mine. May each of you receive this blessing from one who loves you and will definitely miss you a lot. May peace and light and hope and joy and love go before you. Paz, luz, esperanza, gozo, amor. May you recognize them as they manifest themselves around you. May you accept these gifts 
when others bring them to you. May you sow from what you freely planted. May justice and advocacy be your compass. May faith and love be your foundation. May light be your companion. May creator, God, spirit, mother, sibling, leader, the divine lead you. Go and lead others. Go and heal others. Go and amplify others. Go and comfort others. Go and challenge everyone. Go and love everyone. Go and love yourself fiercely. Amense con mucha intensidad. Congratulations, y'all. Get ready to go to the chapel now. Woo! See y'all there. Can't wait to see y'all as you graduate. Congratulations. See you soon.